Hi, it's K2EFG on a beautiful midsummer uh, day, and uh, I'm on the uh, borders of uh, Brooklyn and Queens, right by the Verrazano Bridge here. And here's the beginning of my building of the YP3 Super Antenna. Uh, let's take a look. I have here just the beginning of the construction, and I have secured the mast uh, to the I've secured the, the core of the antenna to the mast. I have a few of these uh, uh, weight counterweights to uh, put on the uh, on the center, just so while I'm adjusting the antenna, it will be uh, on. And uh, this is it. I'm gonna get going to work. Here's the kit, the YP3 kit, and I'm gonna be working 20 minutes. Okay, here's the antenna uh, semi-constructed. I'd like to make a few comments. First of all. When putting in the driven element, it's important to remember to put this piece together, uh, not to just screw uh, the driven element uh, uh, without this bridge here, because that's going to make it um, just more difficult to assemble. The second thing is, I pre-marked all of these for 20 meters, for 24 inches right here, and then I close it. What I also made uh, is I, I pre-marked these smaller sections that come into the driven element uh, the reflector and the um, uh, the the, uh, the director, and I pre-marked them as well, as you can see, with different markings for different uh, for different uh, lengths. Unfortunately, I made the mistake of doing this at home, so I I marked it from the edge of the screwed part, which means I've got to now add half an inch to everything I marked. So it's not a disaster, but it makes uh, uh, just a little bit of adjustment. And the other thing for today, I also forgot the, um, the antenna tuner at home. So I'm going to have to either use, uh, not the antenna tuner, the antenna analyzer. So I'm going to have to use an antenna tuner, balance it a little bit, and pray for the best. Uh, so far, construction is very nice. Uh, K2 for an example, this is a, a director element, and it should be marked for 20 meters. I believe it's 22 inches. Uh, that's the red marking that you see here of 22 inches, but I pulled it out by about half an inch to compensate for that screwed portion right here, which is in the, uh, in the coil, in the 20 meter coil. So just be careful when you do the markings, don't make the same mistake that I made. I didn't want to make it more confusing and, um, and uh, uh, remark everything, so I just know that I need to add about half an inch, three quarters of an inch to everything I do, so it's the right length. We'll see how that works. Well, here it is, standing uh, at uh, about uh, 14 feet above ground, guide, and hopefully it won't fall. There's a mild uh, southerly wind. You can see that I like to mark the edges of the guy with some sort of a flag or something like that. Where is it? Here it is. And put in some uh, security. Also make sure that the uh, lines are marked, the guy lines are marked put something else on the bottom just to be sure. I, before I had some questions with some, some uh, passing buyers, uh, kind of fun, uh, and, uh, and uh, let's see you know, we can, if we can operate now. As I said, I don't have an I don't have a, a, a antenna analyzer, so I'm just going to balance it here with an additional cable I have, and hopefully I'll be able to tune it right. Uh, I'm just going to do it with a prayer. If it doesn't work well, I'll just uh, apply an antenna tuner and call it a day. All right, K2EFG, trying it out with a YP3 super antenna. Okay, a little bit of a mixed bag. Uh, since there's no tuner, I gotta tune it with my, uh, there's no antenna analyzer, I gotta tune it with my own tuner. Um, what I've discovered is that as I moved between band uh, sections, I gotta tune it again to higher uh, or lower uh, uh, resonance, but it works very nicely and uh, I managed to get some, uh, some results. And I'm gonna continue to operate here. It's about 3 p.m. Eastern, so I'm just about to enter the gray line. Here is antenna standing still very nicely. Um, I may raise it a little bit or may turn it around. One of the features I like about the uh, YP antenna is if you remember, I guided in with this ring on the top, and as a result, I can slowly move it and the guys will stay in place. So as you can see, I'm moving it now, but the guys, the, the guys in the in the ring stay in place, and I can adjust the directionality of the antenna. Very nice feature of the YP 
uh, super antenna and uh, so far uh, with a little bit of balance, a little bit of ingenuity and a little bit of luck I'm joining the America uh, QSO party here in uh, in Brooklyn, New York. 7-3. This is K2. Okay, more success. I also want to point out that I am a station that is fully grounded. This uh, red cable here goes to the tuner and grounds the tuner and the rest of the system. I'm taking a little break, a well-deserved break. I had a lot of fun with the QSO. I'm enjoying the fact that people are stopping by and asking questions. That tells me that uh, the educational portion of the show is also going on nicely. And uh, so far I'm uh, catching Minnesota, which is a good bit away. Uh, a beautiful day. Uh, the gray line is still not here. I will turn around west when it's all over and, uh, and try to catch Europe. Uh, it's about 3.30 now. All right, K2EFG, it's about 5 o'clock a few hours later. Uh, first of all, I set up the N-Fend antenna uh, to uh, just on the, on the, um, on the uh, mast of the uh, YP3. I got amazing results. I got, I got California, I talked to Spain on various frequencies. It was really fun. I didn't expect that at all. I kept on moving uh, frequencies. Uh, yeah, it needed a tuning every time, but it was really fun. And I'm really impressed by this uh, NFED antenna, what it can do, uh, the, the versatility. And, uh, it, and, and I operate in other times, but uh, still, this was a lot of fun. I'm gonna switch back to, um, I'm gonna switch back to uh, uh, 20 meter and to the Yagi with the YP3 and see what I can do. Meanwhile, some people stop by. It's always fun to have them come by and ask questions and show them what ham radio is about. I enjoy that as well. Uh, for now, K2EFG. Uh, one thing I need to document is the fact that I'm charging the antenna here. This is the Goal Zero. I used this one in Israel. Uh, the new piece is actually a buddy pole um, charger controller here. It has a tiny little light there that flickers. Uh, I had it st sitting here for about an hour charging this battery here from the Goal Zero. Uh, let's see how this setup is. Uh, has worked. I'm going to reconnect the bigger battery and see what I could get. Uh, on a beautiful sunny day. I should be getting some results. Uh, let's see what the voltage is on the on the antenna uh, on the on the battery. It needs to be um, needs to be balanced, but the instructions are that every other charge balancing will be fine. So let's see how this charge has worked for this particular battery. Uh, here's K2EFG. It is six o'clock, and I am ready to go. It had been a great day with YP3, with uh, the Ultimax 100 antenna, and with the charger. Let's not forget our uh, sunblock with the charger from Buddy Pole. Uh, has uh, worked very well. It's almost time to call it off. FT100 and the uh, uh, portable tuner from MFJ. It's been great. It's been fun. The sun is setting. The YP3 is taking one last dive, and then this is it. So uh, I will say 7-3 and I'll go run home, upload this and uh, hope you enjoyed it, 7-3.